They go play action for Lacey. Now Roger. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked off by Chris Conti. There he goes right side. And it's a pick six. He brings it back to the house for a Buccaneer TD. Those free safeties, they get to sit back there if they've got good pass rushers like this team does. Read like a book. He read it like a book and took it in for six. And if they use their eyes well and their anticipation skills, they can make big plays just as what we saw, a free safety's dream. Follow the football, go to it, and take it the other way. Roberto Aguayo now for the point after. Oh, it's a fake. They'll try and throw for it. It's a wobbler, and it's intercepted. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. On the return, this is Micah Hyde. And he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. And now the Packers get set to go. It's Rodgers. Dancing to his left. And he'll slide down to avoid the tackle. 12 yards on the pickup. And that leads to a Green Bay first. Man, defensively, that hurts. They got him out of his rhythm. They had him hemmed in. But somehow he was able to tuck it away and get away for a game. And he'll avoid the tackle there with a slide. Five yards on the pickup. And that'll make it a second down. Now, how about that play? He took a possible negative and turned it into positive yardage and slid down to avoid taking a big shot. Excellent job getting down and avoiding the big hit. Now, Lacey left that game against the Giants in ankle injury, but expected to be okay prior to leaving 11 carries, 81 yards. And you saw the Eddie Lacey signature spin move a couple of times as well. He is just some type of a back, and I think he's gotten into a good rhythm here in 2016. He didn't get to 100 yards, probably because of the ankle injury. They need him back, and in a big way. His backup, James Stark, struggling in the early going. Now the offense is not leaving the field. They're going to stay out and go for it on fourth and three. I know the initial focus was on how far that pass was downfield, but how about the coverage on the play? Able to stay with him, get his hands where the receiver's hands were going to try and catch the ball, tips it up in the air, and knocks it away. I don't know if I agree with that. I guess they don't care if I agree with that. <laughs> but, boy, you have to be surprised by that, right? I, I definitely was surprised that they decided to go for it in this situation. But they must have either felt like they either had a great play call on or they're trying to show extreme confidence. So the offense has it first and 10. One back is Lacey. On first down, Rodgers. And it's hauled in by Jared Cook. 12 yards there as they move the chains. Almost not fair. The big guy running the corner route, being able to lean and push and get to where he wants. So how do you stop him? A lot of times you want to have a linebacker on him, a bigger body guy who can handle him physically. But a lot of times that doesn't work as well because his quickness often wins the route. Now a play fake here on first down. It gets it over the middle to Cobb. 
A little bit of a breakout game for Cobb in week five. Nine catches, 108 yards, and Charles, 12 catches through the season's first three weeks was all he had. So you can see how he increased production in the last game against the Giants. The pride of Alcoa, Tennessee, Randall Cobb. And I'm just going to tell you, if I ever dive into fantasy football, I'm getting him on my team because I think he's going to continue to bring those numbers back to the 2014 levels. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. Now Rodgers throwing on second down. Caught left side by Kyle. And stopped a few yards shy of the goal line at the three. It's a good gain of 11. Sets him up first and goal. And now they're in the hurry up. And the offense in a great spot. It's first and goal from the three. Nothing doing there. They're going to wind up holding him at the two. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. On second down, here's Rodgers. Trying to get it to Cobb, and it's intercepted. And he's free going down the left side. It's a foot race. Picked off by Quan Alexander. And it's a pick six. He brings it back to the house for a Buccaneer TD. So a dangerous pass over the middle into zone coverage, and it bit him hard. And what's really difficult when you throw it in that direction and versus that zone, that means the linebackers have gotten to their spot, gotten their heads back around, and they can see the quarterback and everything in front of them. And they took big advantage of it, went the other direction. Excellent blocking and picked up a touchdown. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. This is taken about seven yards deep. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And Green Bay getting ready to go as they take the field. They come out here with a zero on the scoreboard. What was said in that locker room? That's what I want to know. I would love to have been in there because we often have the feeling that there's a lot of shouting, screaming, people upset. But typically, halftime locker rooms are a lot more clinical than that. And in this case, are they upset that the plays weren't working because of execution? Or do they think just they were just bad plays to call? Yeah. We'll find out pretty quickly here if they feel like they had something going, but they just need to do it a little bit better or not. We'll find out. They get five out of that one, and it moves the chains. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you've got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might want to. Now look out, Rodgers. Lost the football. And it's picked up by the – down the number. There he goes, and he returns it to the end zone. A fumble recovery touchdown for the Bucs. The offense, they've had some sloppy moments. Sloppy there again on that one, and it could be the backbreaker. From a defensive perspective, if the offense is going to be sloppy, you've got to take advantage of that. And that's what they've done all game long. And he'll get into the end zone as the two-point conversion is successful. So here's the kickoff now as he'll get it again following that fumble return for a score. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. The Packers offense now heading back out onto the field. One back is Lacey. Throwing on first down is Rodgers. He's going to float this one deep right side. And it's knocked away and incomplete. Well, they decide to air it out a little bit on that play, take a shot downfield, but the coverage was really nice. Able to get a hand in and tip it away. So incomplete on first. Let's see what second down has in store. Rodgers again here on second and 10. He'll set up the screen to Lacey. And he's brought down. It's a gain of 11 yards that time, and it produces a new set of downs. They ran that one well. And not only did they pick up a nice chunk of yardage on the screen, they sent a message to the defense. Rush and no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Robert Ayers able to get in there and take him down for a loss of three. So the D gets the sack on first, and now it brings up second down. Rodgers to throw on second down. He's going to float this one deep right side. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. 
on every offensive coordinator, every play caller sheet. They have about five or six plays per game that they call shot plays or big plays, and you don't get many opportunities to dial them up, and they just did, and they drop it with a great chance to make a big play. That's going to hurt. This has been a really nice day for the defense. They've made it so difficult to find open receivers because they're able to squeeze the passing lanes down. A lot of what they're doing is communicating. Receivers. And he's going to be grabbed and pulled down. William Golston in there to drop him. And it'll be a loss of about eight. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. They built a good first half lead. Now they Just to even up the score, we're coming kicking down.